Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alexander. My name is Anastasia. We have talked together, so we'll pass our mic. Don't, don't get distracted by that. Yeah, and uh, here is an, ag an agenda of this talk. Um, the reason we give this talk today is that uh, lately we were involved in such a strange activity as finding uh, new developers for PostgreSQL. And uh, uh, we discovered it's not that simple. And uh, we will tell you how we mm, manage or not manage uh, that good to solve this task. Um, I would like to notice that uh, this talk is completely non-technical. There will, there will be no code, etc. But I, we hope you will enjoy, nevertheless. Uh, also, we use uh, uh, words like mentor, project manager, and stuff uh, like synonyms. We realize it's not completely accurate, but we have a good reason, and you will uh, realize this reason uh, eventually. Yeah, since this talk is mostly based on our personal experience, I think we should tell a little bit about us. My name is Anastasia. I graduated with BC in Applied Math four years ago, so I'm kind of freshman, fresh uh, Postgres developer. Uh, and I took part in Google Summer of Code with Postgres at my last uh, university year, and I wrote my diploma, which was related to Postgres, so kind of I work with it all my professional career. And now, currently, I work at Postgres Professional Company, which is Russian vendor of Postgres, and I contribute to Postgres in many various ways. Um, first of all, I code, uh, definitely. Uh, I write some enhancements to indexes, to backup tools. Uh, also, I teach and mentor our new colleagues, and also recently I began to help to manage development process in our company because we really found out that it is something we need to do and need to pay attention. Well, I live in Moscow, Russia. I develop software since uh, 2007, and uh, well, I have various interests which are listed here. And um, um, recently, I also started to use project to do project management stuff uh, in our company. Yeah. So a few words on development Postgres, like from from my view. Uh, as I already said, development Postgres is my first job. So actually, I had no idea. I think that's why I had no idea it's considered to be such a difficult thing like all this scary C low level system programming. I didn't know that and I'm happy that I didn't know because I would be probably scared by that. Uh, and I, um, maybe not like others, I learned mostly through practical experience, through digging into the code, through reading mailing lists, and I can say that it's a great source of information, of opinions, and for me, as a beginner, it was probably the most valuable open source part of PostgreSQL project, because you can see not only uh, the result decision, like the mm, final design, but you can see all the reasoning behind it, and you can learn way more from that. There's some um, difficulties in Postgres development, of course. Um, first of all, the pace can be frustrating sometimes. Like, that's not what you get used to in any other area. It's quite slow because it involves a lot of research, and um, results as well can be, can be not that um, impressive sometimes. Uh, from time to time, we'll have the patches, the researches, which will be labeled as uh, not that successful uh, thing and go to, to like, um, stash and uh, stay there forever. But it was useful to check it. It was worth to do that, but it won't be a, Postgres, a part of Postgres, like, never. Uh, and uh, another thing I want to point out is that Postgres project is really big. It covers many areas in computer science, and anyone can pick uh, something of his interest. 
Okay, unlike Anastasia, I had some experience before joining Postgres Professional, and I did a lot of programming in weird languages like Perl and uh, Erlang and Scala, and uh, I did uh, um, software development of uh, backends mostly, and um, I had an opinion on how uh, the code is supposed to be written, but and uh, turned out that my opinion doesn't quite match with the opinion of uh, people who developed PostgreSQL. It was um, a, a little bit surprising. Uh, a few issues that uh, struck me uh, in a few uh, in first weeks are listed here. And um, uh, another another thing I noticed that uh, it's uh, not that uh, Postgres community needs a lot of uh, new developers. Even I mean software developers, because there are lots of uh, brilliant software developers, and uh, uh, you can notice that there is a lack of uh, code reviewers, for instance, or testers, or I don't know, some people with soft skills. So uh, we needed new developers in our company, and uh, we uh, had to ask ourselves where to find them. Uh, first idea is just find a, a database management system developer, hire him. The problem is there are none. There are none who is looking for a job. Already is everyone is already hired, everyone is pretty much happy with their job, so it's not quite an option. Um, another option was to find uh, developers who is um, who has an experience in some different uh, area, uh, preferably in low-level programming, and uh, it might work, but uh, our experience shows that, uh, well, uh, basically they uh, face the same issues as issues as I did, and um, uh, leave after some time, because uh, there are much simpler ways to um, to earn money, to, um, you can do less and uh, raise more money, so it's not for everyone. So um, we thought, uh, what if we hire graduates? And um, it will probably work, however, there are, mm, Okay, uh, there are gotchas. Um, yeah, you need a mentor and um, uh, right, graduates are rare, etc. By the way, if you have any questions or additions, please interrupt us at, at, any, uh, at any point. Okay, so eventually we developed uh, a course for university students and uh, read it twice at different universities, and now we'll share some some results of this uh, of this practice. Uh, first of all, theory. Um, actually, there are few, if any, issues with teaching theory because there are already many great books, many courses which exist, and they're structured well, and they're taught, and they were taught for years. So you won't face any problems with that, actually. Um, it's easy to explain the purpose of each component of DBMS because you actually face those things in real world all the time. Like you, it's, it's easy to explain why you need, I don't know, stable and reliable software. Uh, there is also a lot of design ideas, a lot of papers to discuss, and it's really good um, activity for students. They really enjoy it. So that's kind of easy thing to do for me as a teacher. But um, when it comes to practice, it's not that easy. And we've try we were trying to, uh, to find some, to try some different approaches to find some uh, best solutions. Um, personally, as a student, uh, not so far, I understand why, uh, why some students lack enthusiasm in writing like yet another abstract task uh, like when you need to write yet another hash table or b3 it's not that exciting you want to do something something for real world something practical and uh, something what people will use but um, so we try to find such a tasks to to get students happy uh, and uh, 
eventually, apparently, there are not many of them. Uh, there is really few junior level tasks in database development because everything which was easy was developed already. So um, another thing that it takes more than just good uh, algorithms and programming language skills. It requires um, a good uh, attention to details, to corner cases. It requires uh, some uh, ability to write code comments and to do some test coverage and to check it and to make a thorough benchmarking. And uh, it was not surprisingly, but that's not the things that students do best. Uh, there's also some PostgreSQL specific, which uh, all of you know, like uh, some specific code, some uh, very special development process, which is uh, not familiar for people outside the community. And uh, what we found out that to do list on Wiki Postgres, it doesn't help much in finding new ideas for new projects, because uh, we included there many issues which were tried, which. Uh, some developers took attempt to implement and then they faced some problems and then it went to do the list. It's not actually the source of new ideas, it's actually more like uh, something we need to do but we don't know how right now. So it's to do for experienced uh, developers, not for newbies. Mm -hmm. Okay, we tried to um to do a course, co course on uh, Moscow State University, and um, there was some issues as with uh, this course because, uh, first of all, it was um, uh, elective. Uh, students can visit it, or, or they could uh, visit some other courses, and um, uh, the big problem we faced is that uh, the choose of the uh, course was not uh, fixed. Uh, by the students in the beginning of the semester. So they visited our course out of curiosity, and um, but uh, they did not do any homework, and uh, uh, yeah, and um, they chose to take exams for other courses. And um, yeah, this was <coughs> kind of disappointing. Um, basically, it's the biggest problem with uh, MSU. Yeah, though it uh, gave us some good results. We hired a couple of uh, students who are now our juniors and they are great perspective. I hope you'll see their patches in, in Postgres soon. Uh, with the High School of Economics, don't be surprised by the name. They have really strong uh, faculty of computer science. Uh, it was another story. We had mandatory course and students were like really motivated to, to get their grades and to, to do their homework. They, uh, along with good background in, in algorithms, it really gave us a, a good results. Um, they have quite unusual for Russia uh, system of grading, uh, which uh, we had to learn as, as a new newbie teachers, uh, and surprisingly we met some some issues that they hadn't course on C. They l learned C++ and other languages, and we had to adjust our tasks a bit. Mm, but uh, as a final result, we had several patches which not uh, which were not like production ready, but were in a really good shape. And I hope that I'll maybe review and. Uh, rework them a bit and will send on uh, on behalf of the students from to, to the Comet Fest. Okay, I think that's also my slide. Um, so we tried different approaches as we already said. Uh, one of the good moves were, was uh, papers will have style seminars like when you give uh, a paper to, to students and they read it at home and they uh, maybe mark their questions, and then you discuss it uh, in class and everyone gives his opinion. They try to, to discuss what changed since the paper was, was issued, and that is really something, uh, some good activity. We tried to work, uh, work in small groups, and it turned out to be not the best idea of us because it really requires some strong management skills, uh, which 
which are not uh, every random group of students have. Uh, we also tried patches and contrips for PostgreSQL. Uh, it was not easy to find a suitable task. It required a lot of work on, from our side. It was really challenging for me to do such a lot of review and to answer a lot of questions, but it helped me to grow, to grab, to deepen my uh, knowledge of Postgres, and it led us to some really, really impressive results, I think. Uh, and there was also approach with educational database management system, uh, which were written in C++, and like every student could pick a part, a component, and uh, write it on his own. So it worked, but uh, uh, it was less enthusiasm for a toy project, because like I don't want to write code comments for something that will that nobody will use, and I don't see a reason to write tests for something which is like. Just a, just a toy project, but uh, uh, like you can really um, see the level of the student. You can uh, evaluate their skills before you give them some serious tasks. That was uh, maybe the, the best benefit of this uh, approach. So. Uh, we got students with strong uh, DBMS background. Uh, we taught them, so what's next? Uh, we maybe want to hire them and to uh, offer them some, some job at our company. First of all, we can provide diploma project ideas. It, uh, it requires a lot of work from mentor. It requires, because uh, not everyone is ready to answer uh, thousands of stupid questions. Uh, but it worked well for some of our colleague, colleagues, for me, uh, as an example, thanks to Alexander. Uh, and we can also offer them an internship, maybe summer internship, and uh, eventually get to job offer and trial period. So after all those steps, you have a valuable expert in a quite a complicated field. And there is a gotcha that these experts are prone to get a job offers from other companies, and you need to do something to keep them, to keep them with you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, there are some gotchas regarding so-called onboarding of uh, new employees, uh, because they have lots of questions, they never worked with uh, PostgreSQL code base before, so you better write uh, an article, maybe in a blog post or uh, internal article in Confluence or the system you are using, uh, that explains uh, well, first steps, how to build PostgreSQL, how to write tests, how to uh, submit a patch, etc. Uh, you uh, better had, have some um, explanation on PostgreSQL internals. Uh, we uh, fortunately have uh, a course by Anastasia, which is called Hacking PostgreSQL. Um, I'm afraid it's in Russian, but uh, it's, it's okay for our, our company. Um, uh, another gotcha we discovered is that uh, some employees are prone to work too hard, like uh, on holidays, for instance. Uh, and uh, you should not allow this, because um, uh, exhausted employee, uh, there is little use of such an employee. Um, you should uh, talk to him or, sh or her and uh, explain the situation and uh, explain that it's okay, you are... Uh, you are new to this project. It's okay to um, show little performance uh, performance in the beginning. You will manage eventually. Don't work too hard. Um. Yeah, I think I have another thing to say. Is that experienced even like uh, uh, programmers with a great experience? They also need some onboarding because you. Uh, you welcome there in your company and you have your own style and people tend to forget about that uh, and uh, it can lead uh, to such a situation that maybe your uh, new star, he ultra, uh, will go and dig into some very interesting task which has uh, quite a few uh, uh, 
to do with your uh, with your goals. He can be like very interested in some area. He can do a lot of cool things, but not your mm, but but not what is in your plan to develop. Yeah, as we found out, it uh, can be quite challenging for a regular PM to manage DBMS development, since there is a lot of very specific terminology we, we've tried and we actually kind of failed this approach because uh, it's, it's really hard to speak uh, the same language with DBMS developers. And so be ready that PM uh, most likely will grow up from your developers. Maybe not the most uh, skilled ones because they tend to be really good at coding and you probably don't want to lose such a, such a great specialist. Maybe you can look at people with uh, good soft skills. Yeah, a yeah, few a few words about the transitional process from a software developer to the project manager. Um, these are my, my slides and my personal experience. I uh, never did project management before. And uh, for me, this uh, transitional process was uh, kind of depressing uh, because uh, you spent years uh, uh, developing your um, so-called hard skills, your technical skills. And now suddenly you have to talk to people and uh, do uh, planning and uh, um, priorities and stuff. Uh, and you need a lot of soft skills which you never developed, uh, at least uh, intentionally. So um, the trick here is to realize that it's not uh, so-called uh, burning out or something. Uh, it's um, another step in your career which you probably did not um, expected uh, but but it not necessarily a bad thing and uh, actually there are lots of interesting things here to learn and um, now I'm quite enjoying the process yeah um, another interesting thing it is that you start to uh, look at many things from another perspective on developer development and uh, business needs and other things for instance um, uh, you start to ask uh, inconvenient questions like uh, what is uh, the priority of this feature? Maybe our clients didn't even ask for it. And uh, you will be surprised how many uh, of your colleagues may work on something which is uh, an interesting technical task but um, which unfortunately no one asked for. And um, well, another common mistake is to optimize things that uh, are probably could be rewritten uh, in a better way, but um, the problem is uh, it works uh, good enough and we, ha we have uh, uh, more serious issues currently, or we have a feature which uh, is uh, uh, not currently used by any of our clients, so there is little reason to optimize it right now, maybe later. And uh, uh, many developers start to optimize things before they even do some benchmark because they just take from their head that the problem is probably here and I, uh, I try to write code and I think it will be uh, better and faster but um, actually the right way to do it is to do uh, benchmarks before and to do benchmarks right is like a serious uh, science. Sometimes uh, perfect is an enemy of good. You have, you, in many cases, it's better to uh, deliver a feature uh, sooner. It probably not in the better shape, but it's better to deliver it now than one year later or two years later, because you have to solve a business issues of your clients, and uh, you better solve it maybe partially, but now, not two years later. Etc. You will be surprised uh, how many people do such mistakes if you look carefully. Okay, some other gotchas. Uh, like um, we started company not that far, um, not that long ago. So uh, we began with some Postgres community style where we get a lot of great experts who did some uh, cool coding. But uh, if you need a predictable and uh, what is important sustainable development process with like estimates with prioritizing tasks, you really need some management. You really need to, to plan your 
work. That's why we probably insist a lot on roadmaps, for which we want to synchronize with community, because we know that our resources are, are limited, like you cannot do everything, and we want to know what is more important, probably this release cycle this year. Um, another thing on project management is that hiring and firing people will become a part of your job. You need to, you need to get ready to that because when it comes to, to people, it's always kind of emotional and you can just uh, lose uh, this connection with someone. But sometimes it, it turns out to be a better option to, to let someone go and to hire another, maybe less experienced person, and it will be... Uh, a good shift for you. Also, shifting the positions between uh, inside the company is uh, probably something you can uh, look at because uh, if you move one of your great DBAs to uh, QA team, one of uh, your developers to DBAs, it can lead to surprisingly good results. Uh, delegate uh, and such called boss factor, you should watch out uh, these things. You probably sometimes need to give uh, tasks which are out of, um, of knowledge zone of some programmer. So it will lead to some slowdown in, in speed of development, but uh, eventually more of your employees will know more of areas of the code. So you won't uh, have such a situation that only that you have some legacy pr probably when some great expert which uh, was the only one who knew this area, this part of the code, when he left or he just, uh, I don't know, got distracted by some something, another uh, great and shiny and uh, he and, and nobody else can catch uh, this job and continue that. And it will take much more time to, to get into this after after uh, after that happens, uh, some uh, some people who get used to like this free community style when you do stuff, they might have also some not that good experience with Scrum or other methodologies before. So you shouldn't like rush into all these uh, fancy project management uh, techniques. Try to take only best. Try to adjust it to your team and uh, try to adjust it to research process because you shouldn't estimate people's progress on like accepted patches because if they did something, if they worked hard and it turned out to be like not the best approach but it led to, to another great solution, it's also a lot of work and you should, uh, should appreciate that. Okay. Uh, uh, Postgres Professional has a, a few uh, offices. Uh, one is in Moscow and another is in uh, Kazan city. And uh, those are, a team is uh, partially distributed. And um, here are some gotchas regarding distributed teams. Um, this mistake I do all the time. Uh, try to use email and uh, text messages as uh, little as possible because uh, uh, this uh, type of communication is prone to be accepted as uh, something uh, aggressive when you didn't intend it to do it and uh, people got upset and always better if it's possible come to someone and talk to him or her um, Unless this is something you should um, save and document, like some agreement which should uh, com come up uh, a year later, like you promised or we agreed or something. In, in this case, uh, naturally, you better write an email. Uh, yeah, use voice whenever possible. Uh, also, we have uh, stand-up meetings uh, once a week, and uh, we choose uh, uh, Mumble software for this. This is an open-source YP solution, uh, completely cross-platform, completely free, self-hosted, and it works. It works great. S sometimes you, mm, I believe it's your bullet actually. Uh, yeah, I want to remind it comes with something like 
uh, imposter syndrome and all that stuff, you need to check the status of remote employees and especially new, new ones uh, uh, more often than the, than the status of those who work with you for, for years. And just because uh, those people can think that they do something wrong, but uh, you'll be surprised that you just ask what's up and person comes with a lot of questions and you, you say like, why didn't you ask before? And there, there's, no, there's no answer. People are just tend to be shy and, and some, somewhere they afraid to, to be a bit unprofessional. Uh, but that is really important thing uh, if you want to keep, uh, to keep and to, to grow those persons. Yeah, there are some more team leading gotchas in such a project as us, uh, as Postgres. Um, you will, as a team leader, as a project manager, you will work with very different people, with both who, uh, those who are com completely new to this area and with like extremely experienced developers who were in this community for years, but still you have to remind them on their uh, duties and uh, remind them uh, that you have plans and so on. Because of the project complexity, you probably won't be able to keep everything in your head. Like, I don't think that uh, that we have uh, people who can be experts in all the companies. And uh, that leads to, to the situation where you need to delegate a lot. And you need to delegate quite uh, complicated uh, architectural decisions. You have no, like, no centralized uh, CTO, like in some companies, you have to delegate it to, to, the, to your developers and trust them a lot. And vice versa, almost every developer will be good at some area. So you really must be ready to manage a lot of uh, passionate discussions. Uh, people, people really uh, enjoy their point of view and they want, uh, uh, and they, they want it to be accepted, but uh, sometimes it can be like really hot discussions. Uh, but uh, if you speak about uh, not this community style, but more like business, more company style, uh, you have to make decision eventually. Uh, if there is no consensus, someone have to be uh, like uh, uh, this person who takes decision uh, and uh, be prepared to upset someone. It is inevitable, but uh, still it's uh, necessary. Uh, I think that we have some issues with this in community and it's, it's really hard, to, hard thing to do. Like we just stash uh, all those uh, controversial issues to, to some to-do list, just like uh, do not continue the discussion, but still some, at, at some point you have to choose, even if uh, both, uh, even if both options are not perfect, you have to choose and do that eventually. Yeah. Okay, uh, serendipitously, I read, I read an article recently. Um, it's unfortunately, it's on Russian, but um, I liked it a lot and it uh, makes a lot of sense to me. It uh, describes uh, the role of a team leader, like three main roles. Uh, the, the first one is a psychologist, uh, meaning uh, speaking with people, soft skills, etc. Uh, second role is uh, logistic, meaning process estimates, priorities. And uh, the third role is an expert, meaning technical expert, software developer, coding stuff. And um, uh, this article says that uh, no one is good in all three roles simultaneously. It's highly un unlikely that you are great in logistic and psychology and uh, software development simultaneously. Uh, those, uh, there are two approaches to solve this. Uh, the first is to choose uh, a team for a specific uh, team leader or project management, whatever you call uh, him or her. And uh, this is a common practice when um, Project management project manager is uh, not a developer, but uh, he or she is good in uh, psychology and logistics, and uh, the team is uh, good in uh, software development. 
Another approach is to, um, to use two persons as a single team leader, and uh, in this case, they will uh, compensate compensate uh, drawbacks of each other. And uh, if you look carefully, carefully on the on first three bullets, you will notice something. Uh, classical PM is psychology plus logistic. Uh, team leader is uh, logistic plus uh, technical expert. And uh, expert plus psychology is a mentor for new software developer or Google Summer of Code mentor. Here are a few links we would like to recommend. I don't think they require any explanation. And um, unfortunately, we had uh, little time, but uh, fortunately, we are available after this talk, and we have some time for questions. So if you have any, we could answer them. While you are thinking, we have some bonus slides. <laughs> Specifically, we thought we could some uh, uh, some issues with uh, timing. So, so um, there is a great video. It, there was a, a great video on YouTube uh, uh, called uh, "What Does Senior Mean?" Unfortunately, it was uh, removed because uh, the conference organizers asked to remove this video. Uh, it was from. Uh, some guy from Netflix. Unfortunately, I didn't remember the name. The name, but you could, uh, you probably watched this video. It was on Hacker News. The guy was in uh, funny head, like uh, with uh, horns. So, so did someone watch it? Anyone? Okay. Um, it describes uh, the path, the path of. Uh, Mm, software de developer from uh, simply writing the code to uh, more um, to realizing more business stuff I would say so first you just uh, uh, write code get task uh, tasks on input and patches on output uh, you don't have to uh, think a lot um, at some point you realize there are bigger technical problems that uh, you could uh, split into parts and uh, there are dependencies between these parts. You have to prioritize these parts and uh, schedule somehow, and there are dependencies. And uh, this way, you start to think on a higher level about problems. And uh, the highest uh, level, according to this talk, it's not my talk, um, is when you start to look for business problems. Not technical problems, but uh, our business had, have, has a problem, which is blah, blah, blah. So. Hopefully, this talk will be available in the nearest future. And uh, these are some papers we um, gave to our students for um, for reading and telling during the uh, Papers Well of Style seminars. Okay, any questions? Or oh, please. Okay, I, I can answer. I can answer this, but I know my employer will not like it. But yeah, uh, but uh, I, I prefer to be honest. Um, 
I've been working as a software developer, and I noticed some problems. Like you, you receive um, tasks from different directors, which are all ASAP, all very necessary, and uh, there, are, there are no business process, and uh, it's very uh, hard for you to work in such an, uh, an envir environment. And uh, I had. To, to, Two, two choices, it either solve it or leave the company. And I decided to, well, I, I can leave the company any time, so I decided to try to solve it. it and I believe Anastasia realized it um, in the same time, more or less. Uh, yeah, I actually had some, another reason, uh, some other reasoning. Uh, it's really something that comes from customer needs. We develop our own fork, and we have very limited resources, especially limited in, in terms of uh, good developers, like uh, the senior ones. We have some of them, and we do not want to, uh, like, uh, to, we, we do want to use uh, their resources as much as possible to, uh, to get our clients happy. So we develop uh, on on demand some uh, some patches, some features, and it really requires uh, a lot of planning. So you need to be predictable. If people want to buy something of your company, maybe buy your software, they need to know what what will they ex ex uh, uh, what to expect and and when, especially. So like when you say this feature will probably come out in the new release, it's it's not that reliable like thing. Uh, and you say like, oh, oops, we haven't uh, get it committed, so so no, please wait one year more. So uh, that's something you have to really plan hard and uh, really to watch out, uh, at least at one company. I think that everyone who develops it for customer uh, does the same things, and I don't know if it's possible to to run community the same way because I really enjoy the current community style where we got a lot of ideas, a lot of kind of discussion, and eventually we get uh, like brilliant uh, quality code. But sometimes we just can't wait that, mu that much to, to get the perfect. Yeah, definitely we use this way. We have and we like raise a big community in Russia, which involves not only like the core developers, but also uh, DBAs, uh, app developers, and all people who are just interested in Postgres in some way. And we really want to see them. Uh, but why we decided to go to university is because students, they kind of have uh, more time to study than just people. And when you just tell to some probably DB or someone to try coding Postgres, which which takes a lot of time to start. Uh, actually, it's it's not just one evening or just a couple of maybe uh, uh, days at a weekend. It it really takes some time to get involved into that. So we decided that maybe we can uh, look carefully to the students who have this time, uh, who are just. Uh, at the beginning of their way, and who have no like uh, duties for their um, day job. But but still, we we use this uh, way also, and we have many uh, 
uh, DBAs who work at our company and who came just from community. Definitely, we're trying to speed up this a bit. I, I would like to notice, uh, uh, note that uh, it, uh, this approach with students, uh, it doesn't, it didn't work like great. Like everything is complete success. Um, we from, I think from like 20 students, we uh, hired one or two, and uh, like 50 percent of these like didn't manage. So it, it kind of works, but you need a lot of mentors. Please. Yeah, so I just wanted to mention that I think in many ways we've had experiences which are very similar to yours in uh, teaching developers to be good PostgreSQL uh, developers. I mean, uh, our process of hiring has been a little bit different from what you've been doing, but that process of mentoring people, trying to get them familiar with expectations, seeing them gradually grow, you know, it takes Okay, I believe this was our time. Thank you for your attention. If you have any other questions, catch us after this talk. Thank you.